So in this video, I'd like to look at ways of reducing any unwanted energy transfers. I'm going to do a short investigation using a couple of these rocket lollies. And we're going to look at the way that um, heat is transferred from one place to another. Now you can do something similar, maybe in the classroom where you have hot water and you look at how quickly it cools down. And you have it in different beakers and you look at things like insulation and how many layers affect the rate of energy transfer. But I'm going to do it with some of these rocket lollies. Now for one of these lollies, what I'm going to do is try and insulate the outsides. I've got these uh, cotton um, kind of sheets here. So this is something which is fairly lightweight but quite thick and therefore there's a lot of uh, small air pockets uh, trapped inside it. So I'm just going to wrap it in quite a few of these. And to secure those on, I'm just going to use some rubber bands. So uh, here we go. And we're just going to compare this one with this one over here. I've uh, made something out of Lego to hold them in. I suppose you could probably use uh, retort stands or some kind of clamp stands in your class, but uh, I don't really have anything like that here. So if I just pop these in. And what I'm going to do is compare this to just a basic lolly with nothing on the outside. And I guess it's going to be melting, so I'm just going to put it in a tray like this. And what we can then look at is the rate of energy transfer. In this case, it's the energy from the surroundings in the, t in the, the room that we're in at the moment, which is being transferred into this lolly, and then it's going to start to melt it. So all we need to do is just wait and see what happens. OK, I'm going to speed this bit of the video up a little bit. So I did use an infrared light just to speed up the process and I had it the same distance away from both of these. Um, I think what's quite apparent is that uh, there's a lot more melting taking place on this side. And if we look at this ice lolly, it's kind of completely uh, soft. Um, if I look at the other one, if I just take off some of the, uh, the things that I wrapped it up in, even though it's been in the same conditions as in the same room temperature, exposed to the same amount of uh, heat from the infrared light, what we can see actually is it's pretty amazing actually how well this one has lasted. If I just take off all of this uh, insulation here, it's kind of frozen onto it. Um, but we can really see the difference between these two ice lollies. Okay, and what we've got here is something that has a low thermal conductivity. Uh, thermal conductivity is basically the rate at which energy can be transferred through it. This insulation uh, here, because it's got it's a very poor conductor of heat. It's got a low thermal conductivity and therefore it's a really good insulator. This one here traps a big layer of air and air, because it's a gas, is a very poor conductor. So one way we can think about reducing energy losses is by insulating things. Another thing we can do is we can use uh, another way of reducing energy losses when you've got two surfaces rubbing together. Now, for example, this might be on a bike chain where you want to oil it every so often to make sure that there's not too much friction. Now, the reason for that is if we were to zoom in to the actual surface of two materials, we'd see that it's actually not completely smooth. It's actually quite bumpy. And this is where you put all the, the atoms, the molecules, the particles. Now, if we look at two surfaces, if the surfaces are, move, are actually touching each other, when they're moving across each other, there's quite a lot of friction there because of the way that the particles interact. Now, when you have things like lubrication, so it may be oil or grease or something like that, what it's actually doing, it's actually separating very slightly the two layers of material. And that means rather than actually them touching each other and bumping into each other, because they're very slightly separated, often with something which flows, so it might be oil, for example, which is liquid, um, that means it's a lot easier for the two sur uh, surfaces to move past each other where there's less friction. And if there's less friction, that means less work has to be done. So the two main ways of reducing heat transfer, or reducing energy losses, sorry, are we can use insulation or we can use lubrication.